out after California banned singing and chanting in churches because of a surge in coronavirus cases. But one local pastor is taking action. Millennial Sean Foyt is bringing his worship services outside, traveling to cities all across the nation, sharing good news with his worshipers. And he joins us now with more. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, pastor Sean, thanks so much for joining us. Really uh, appreciate okay. it and good morning to you. Good morning. Great to be with you guys. Good to be uh, with you as well. So when the governor announced that churchgoers uh, would not be allowed to sing, I would imagine that would strike a nerve. I, I, I can't imagine, I'm sure, for a lot of churchgoers, you know, going to church and not being able to sing, it, it's, it's almost like not going to church at all. Yeah, I mean, I, it was very confusing because, you know, here you see the governor and a lot of state officials encouraging uh, the protests, <clears throat> you know, and, and I'm not against those either, but then in the same breath, you have them banning the ability for the church to come together in less than groups than 100 and simply sing. So it, it, very, it seemed very hypocritical um, at best and maybe even discriminatory at worst. And so we wanted to kind of take action against that. But you did understand the science behind it because when you project, of course, you're capable of spreading uh, your, your germs, your spittle, uh, even, even farther than you would by just quietly speaking. Yeah, I mean, I mean, even we saw with the protests, there were many people chanting. There were many people that were in close proximity. There were a lot of people without masks on. Um, so, you know, our heart in bringing worship outside was to was to take it to a place where we could have social distancing and where we could be in, in you know, prox in areas where we weren't as close to each other with proximity. Sure. And how did the services go? Oh, they were so amazing. I mean, we were we were, you know, I think people are really hungry to get together. You know, the church has been quarantined for you know, many months now. And as we're seeing across America, there's an increasing amount, you know, there's a 400% increase in, in alcoholism and drug use. We have child molestation uh, in the home is, is, is record highs. Divorce rate is high. People need the spiritual life that the church brings. They need this togetherness, this sense of connection through worship and singing. And so our heart is to come and meet that spiritual need and take the church outside. Are you, even though you're outside, and obviously the uh, chance of, of infection is, is greatly reduced when you're outside rather than being in, in, inside in, in, a, in an enclosed building, but uh, are, are you guys still practicing safety protocols when you're outside? Yeah, I mean, we're we're encouraging people if they want to come and they want to bring a mask, we're, we're encouraging people to do that. If they want to come and, and be spread apart, we're encouraging them to do that as well. You know, uh, but, you know, this is America and a lot of people either, you know, when they come to the beach with their family, they don't want to bring a mask and they want to maybe spread out a little bit. So we encourage them to do that. But, you know, there's a lot of freedom in these gatherings and people know, you know, essentially the risk that they're taking if they want to be a part of them. But really, it's been an incredible, uh, very life-giving movement that we're seeing happen across the nation. And Pastor Sean, I, you know, I can I can certainly understand, you know, why there there might be feelings of confliction in 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 some ways. I mean, in, on one side, you know, a lot of people think churches are essential services. You you enumerated some of the things that people yeah. are experiencing, including increased suicide rates. Uh, so a lot of people felt really bad that churches were shut down while other businesses were allowed to be open. At the same time, churches can be one of the places where COVID-19 can spread much more quickly. So you, you have these two things you're trying to weigh. Do you feel any sense of conflict at all? You know, I think it. I have so many friends that are pastors across California, and they are doing such a great job and working their hardest to try to follow these protocols and try to follow the ordinances. They're trying to do their best to use sanitation, um, sanitization when they, you know, get their churches ready each Sunday and trying to have less than 100 people. But I think when things come down uh, from the government that say that you cannot sing um, I mean, I think you just reach a point where it's pretty crazy. And I mean, I'm sure that you can track COVID to various church gatherings just as much as you could to Costco or going to Home Depot or going to places where hundreds of people gather and people are touching stuff all over. So, 
it just seemed a little unfair that there was this kind of target on the backs of churches. While in the meantime, I mean, you know, I do want to just give a shout out to the pastors and leaders across California. They're doing a great job. They're trying their hardest to follow these mandates and protect people. But while at the same time, we want to have freedom of religion in this nation to worship our God. Well, Pastor Sean, I know that you're going to be going to other cities. I know you were up north in the San Francisco Bay Area. You're here uh, locally as well. Yes, and I know you're going to Connecticut and uh, New York as well. Uh, I wish you well, and I hope that uh, you're able to hold your services and that people are able to remain safe. I do understand why churches are so important during this very trying time. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. Same to you.